everyone. I am here with Trevor Milton. He is the CEO of Nikola Motor Company, and we're in a very, very special truck, the Nikola One, America's first, or probably the world's first, hydrogen electric semi-truck. Yeah, it's really the first electric truck in the whole world that can go more than 200 miles. It's a full 1,200 miles, up to 1,300 miles on a full range of, uh, of hydrogen. So hydrogen is a zero emission fuel, and uh, it has, uh, has no emissions whatsoever. The only byproduct is water. So how long have you been working on this? Because this is this is a fully functioning truck right here that yeah. we're sitting in. So how long have you guys been working on this? Uh, years in secrecy. <laughs> it's been very hard. Um, some of the some of the people have found out about us over the last four or five months as we announced some of the mm -hmm. uh, the lead up to this big event. But it took years and years to get here. Um, this isn't just a pusher like a lot of vehicles that they unveil are just vehicles that don't actually function. Mm -hmm. It's a fully functioning uh, um, you know vehicle, which is really incredible. You can go through. You can you know we can change out a. Uh, Pretty much everything we want, all the temperatures. I mean, this is a fully functioning vehicle. It's not just a, it's not just a pusher. That's what they call the, in the automotive world a vehicle uh -huh. that they just push and it doesn't move. All right, so let's go through some of these things. I mean, here I've got a 21-inch touchscreen. This one's actually not the 21. The 21 okay. will actually encompass this into, uh, entire area here in okay. production. So that'll be changed. Right now, this is a, uh, this is a 15-inch monitor here. Okay. Um, and then it has dual 7-inch and a 10-inch a, uh, up there. So this is a 15. In production, it'll be a full 21-inch, and that'll right. give the driver the ability to actually see all the different freight that is in their um, freight that's in the uh, system okay um it's cool because the driver has the ability to access all wi-fi 4g over the air uh -huh. um and it lets them actually get all the um the updates back from uh, from all the freight loads that are available within a city it can give them uh, the eta and destinations of, uh, of of all of our stations and reroute them i mean it's a full smart computer it's, okay. it's pretty incredible so i'm just like driving along and i'm like hey i got some space in my truck and i'm in la i can go to this and see where can i pick up a load in los angeles that's going to be um that's going to give me the most um efficiency for my current route yeah yeah essentially our freight system is going to be brokers from all over the world be able to upload their, their freight into our system mm -hmm. and drivers can see all the freight that's available on board built into the truck from there, they can take it and they can essentially, uh, they can see every one of the loads. They can rate them based upon the highest paid to the lowest paid. They can also choose a beginning destination and an end destination. And from there, the computer will run millions of calculations to tell them, here's the most valuable route from point A to point B. Okay. And it's uh, it's it's really incredible. It should up the driver's pay by anywhere from uh, more, more than 25% up to 50% of what they're making right now. So will this system be installed in all of the trucks that should be coming online in 2020? Every one of them. Everyone, so yep. it, it all comes... We, we'll be rolling out certain features more and more. Uh -huh. You know, obviously there's a little testing period to make sure everything's running really well. Um, but. The, uh, the, the the entire 21 inch monitor, which will take up this whole entire area and get rid of all the buttons, that essentially is, uh, that will come in the full production. Yeah, okay. along with all the freight system as well. So let's talk horsepower numbers, cause you know, I love high horsepower. What am yeah. I, what are you guys pushing here? This is like a, an electric locomotive. Imagine a locomotive. I grew up, my dad was uh, managing the Union Pacific Railroad when I was a kid. Uh -huh. So for me, it was uh, it was a natural thing because I grew up driving locomotives with the control, you know, with the conductors. Like woo woo yeah. locomotives. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I got to drive them whenever I wanted, and uh, and it was it was really interesting because that's what got this idea into my head. And that is we have an electric motor on every wheel. Okay. And by doing that, we're we have to tone it down. The truck has capacity of up over three thousand horsepower. Yes, let's do but, it. Turner, we let's can't do it. it. We can't do it. So we have to tone it down. Essentially, what we do is we software limit it to about a thousand horsepower. Okay. And about right around about two thousand foot pounds of torque. That's a thousand horsepower is double what any other production mm -hmm. truck for the most part is running on the on the road. Two thousand horsepower is in line with about what most trucks get at peak. Two thousand torque, you mean? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. two thousand foot pounds of torque. The difference is is um, with an electric motor, you have instant torque within right, within right. milliseconds. You're at full peak, so you're in, you don't have a torque curve. It's not like you have to rev that engine, mm -hmm. get that red line in order to get that torque. It's throughout the entire thing. So after the gear reduction, you're almost a hundred thousand foot pounds of torque. No That's way. what's so cool, yeah. <laughs> so that'll propel this thing from zero to 60 in like 30 seconds, right? Under full load. Yeah, and so imagine putting 80,000 pounds on, you can hit that in 30 seconds. And then, but what about stopping? I mean, if I can accelerate that fast, can I stop that fast You can, well? yeah, because we have uh, regenerative braking. A lot of mm -hmm. people that have driven electric cars know right. the feeling. It, essentially, your electric motor is going to reverse and, it, and, it, and right. it creates uh, all the energy and dumps it right back in your batteries. Well, by doing that, you can blend that with the air discs and now you have two or three times the stopping power of just air disc brakes only. Okay, so this is a huge endeavor, right? I mean, what makes you think that you can do this? Well, we did it. <laughs> well, you've done this one, but like yeah. what, you know, you're predicting 50,000 car, 50,000 trucks that you guys wanna be producing. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a huge, huge endeavor. Like how, where are your investors coming from? Uh, you know, it's it's interesting because I always tell people, you know, to, to 
to build something that can work and to build an idea and to build a, a business plan and to build something that actually works is the hardest thing in the world. There's thousands of people out there, um, you know, really, really brilliant minds out there that run the best factories in the world. All it takes is one phone call from me and a little bit more money and I got them on our team. So it's not about, it's it, to, to pull it off, the rest of the stuff is quite easy. It's, it's gonna be hard to expand, it's gonna be hard to roll it out slowly because everyone wants it. It's, uh, we have to roll it out slow, make sure we do it right, safe. Um, that stuff is actually the easiest part. I mean, people think that's the hardest. It's really not, it's, it's a lot of headaches, but there's people out there that are trained to do it. Unfortunately, there's no one in the world trained to build a hydrogen electric truck. Right. I ha we had to do it. Right. So the hardest part is this, because there is no one. If, they, if, if there was people out there that could have done this, they would have done it. Peter Bosn, you know, these other brands, you know, you look at Daimler, Volvo, no one's ever done this. They said it's impossible. So the key is, is you have to have very few people in the world that would dare to put their own money on the line to build mm -hmm. this. We did it. Now, I just want to hire the bril most brilliant minds in the world to, ha to pull off the manufacturing. Right, right. So you have had a lot of, um, a lot of attention on this. You said last night, four billion people, or four billion, billion dollars. dollars. Yep. So we just that, passed four billion. Is that for your leases? Because your lease is fifteen hundred dollars to, or sorry, no. to to reserve your lease is fifteen hundred dollars. Yep. So the power of math tells me that that's two point six million reservations. No, 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 no. Okay. So that's just a reservation. That's just to hold your spot, right? Right. So the average truck lease is between five thousand and seven thousand a month. Okay. So the four billion includes the the leases. That oh yeah, absolutely. So the okay. le the lease term. What <laughs> we do is when we sell a truck on a lease term, we get paid that money up front. Okay. So and then essentially a finance bank will pay us all that money up front. And they keep a cut, right? So if you think about, let's say, a 72-month term where you're where you're running a million miles because mm -hmm. we give full coverage on the truck for a whole million miles, right. that's uh, you know the average lease can you know over the period of that life will be say $500,000 somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Um, but the difference is is your the difference is is if you were to run a diesel, you would be your your cost of ownership on that diesel, including your fuel, would be you know four to five hundred thousand dollars more than that. Right, right. So you'll spend five hundred thousand dollars just on diesel at two fifty a gallon right now in today's world. So think about that. You're essentially getting the truck for free. People just don't understand mm -hmm. that the, the fuel is included in this truck. So you have no fuel costs whatsoever for the entire million miles. That's crazy. So, and also people who drive like maybe a Honda Clarity or a Toyota Mirai, they're going to be able to go to yep. the Nikolai fuel stations, yep. hydrogen stations. Yeah, we'll have, uh, you know, 364 of these stations going up around the country, both mm -hmm. in the USA and Canada. And any hydrogen vehicle can fill there. How long do you think those 364 stations will take to come online? All of them. Oh, it'll take years, years and years. Years I mean, or decades? Yeah, no, year, it'll, it'll, it'll be less than a decade for sure. Yeah. But it'll be years. It'll so probably by, be five to eight years to get them all by online. 20, by 2026? Probably somewhere around that range. I mean, right. it's it's going to be under 10 years for you sure. You heard it here, folks. Um, well, Trevor, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, again, we're here at the Nikola Motor Company in Salt Lake City in the awesome Nikola One hydrogen-powered truck. Thanks, guys.